Oh, look at you. Look at you. You're beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Hold on. I'm going to just switch my little sliders over. Yeah, no problem. Oh, my goodness. I actually I have, this is my front part of my house, my studio. So yeah. I do this screen off. My baby little five-year-old. Give me one second. There we go. Oh, I love it. Screen him off so we're good to go. Aw. Oh, so how have you been? I, I feel like we haven't talked in so long and I haven't seen you. I feel so good. Do you? I feel so good. I, you know what's funny? Um, with everything kind of going on and the way that things have kind of transpired, it's been overwhelming though. Yeah. It's overwhelming. It's a lot to, to take in um, and, and just kind of ha have the business kind of be casted into the spotlight as well. Um, yeah. We've been doing our thing for years. This is, we're not, we're not new. <laughs> That's so, for sure. Yeah. When did you start yeah. your business? Oh my gosh. I started my business in, let's see. Well, officially, officially, we went live about seven years ago. And, um, but I've been a floral designer for about 10 years. Um, I'm self-taught, but my dad is classically trained. So he actually taught me everything that he knew, which is so cool. Oh, um, so yes, a lot of those design awesome. concepts and color theory, he taught me everything and just passed it right along. So just kind of been doing our thing and, and growing the business and, you know, helping brides get married and making cool installations. That's kind of what we do. It's been yes. a lot of fun. So I heard from Brandy Malloy that you and your husband make these amazing um, serving trays and uh, cutting boards. Yes. So tell me a little bit about that because that is exciting. I love it. <laughs> so we, we actually like to build. We love to build. We build a lot of the backdrops that you see on our Instagram for weddings and events. So you know, Corey actually had made me a cutting board last year. And I said, hey, babe, you know, we, I think it's time to start our online marketplace. I think it'd be really, really cool to kind of transition our business a little bit because COVID has really taken a hit. Uh, yeah. You've had a lot of business take a, hot, a hit. So I said, hey, we need to pivot. Let's kind of, you know, see what we can do. So he said, hey, you know, I think it'd be really cool to do those cutting boards. You know, I made you that cutting board. I was like, oh, they're going to die because it's, they're made they're so beautiful. well. They're, oh my God, we... We did not spare any cost with these materials, that's for sure. It ain't no Home Depot run. We, we, we got yeah. um, walnut shipped in from Oregon because it's just a nice oh, hard right. wood and well, uh, sanded them down a million times over so they're baby smooth and just got them to perfection. They're I'm probably one of my proudest piece that we carry for sure. Yeah, Lots they're beautiful. Products. Thank you. So <laughs> for all those who don't know, um, Drew Rios is the owner of Rogan Fox Floral. Mm -hmm. Um, and her website is our uh, www. We'll put it in the we'll put it in the description. But it's okay. uh, www.rogueandfoxfloral.com. Yeah, you got um, it. And you recently launched your marketplace, which has curated uh, wares. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so the online marketplace is actually, um, several businesses actually, friends of mine own these businesses that I, that I know of. And then I said, hey, you guys, I've always loved your stuff. I use it, been using it for years. I want to carry some of your things inside of our marketplace. So some of these are, um, you know, things that are in their, their places and I brought them over. But a lot of it, like the candles, um, the, the stands, we actually had our hands just right in there making everything. So oh I teamed gosh. up with... Uh, my friends uh, from District LA, we were custom ma making scents, which is, if anybody's ever done that, <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It sounds really fun, but it's probably super tedious. And, oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Getting the scent profiles right, making sure, you know, you're using really good quality, you know, stuff so people aren't sure. sneezing left and right. <laughs> yeah. So we wanted to make sure that we were bringing in products that we love, that we have a passion for, that I use in my own home. Um, and then we just wanted to curate just some really cool stuff, some cool houseware. Yeah. You know, we're spending a lot of time in our homes right now, um, kind of quarantined and, and kind of dip it into the world a little bit. But a lot of us are spending a lot more time in our homes. So I really wanted to kind of make cool stuff 
that we just didn't mind looking at all day long. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's smart too, because a lot of, you know, um, since COVID, a lot of the floral designers and, um, you know, designers, freelancers, they're all trying to yeah. branch out and, yeah. and figure out, you know, their way. Um, yeah. Because there isn't weddings, there isn't events right now. I mean, we're so seeing a couple trickle through trickle. Oh, May Ash. Yeah. But um, for the most part, you know, that has that business right there has ceased. So, yeah. you know, it's interesting to see, um, you know, just on Instagram, how everyone is kind of adapting, mm -hmm. you know, and keeping, so you know, keeping it going. It's so um, true. You've got to be adaptable in these times. I think that's the biggest thing. You have to be adaptable. You have to pivot, but you also have to pivot and do stuff that is from your heart because it'll come through if you're just doing it just to, you know, get something out there real quick. You really got to put your all behind something if you're going to put your name on it and put it out there for your clients and for people that discover for sure. Yeah. So what inspires you? Gosh, everything inspires me. I know that's so vague. Everything inspires me from what I see on TV, my friends, my family. I have a little five-year-old that just has so much energy. You know, I, I do a lot of this for him. I really do. I, I want him to look at me and be proud. I want him to see everything that I've built from the ground up. All the hard work that you can put towards something and see the success, but you have to work at it really, really hard. I, I do a lot for him and I'm building this legacy for him for sure. Love it. That's awesome. That's <laughs> amazing. So as a black female business owner, what do you think is or was your biggest hurdle to overcome in your career? I think the biggest hurdle, and even still now, you know, when people go on our Instagram and they discover us, right, usually they're, they're, they're finding us through maybe going through their little searches. Maybe they yeah. come up and see a really cool installation that we've, that we've built and they're like, wow, who did this? Oh my gosh, I have to have them for their wedding. And then they click through to see who Rogan Fox is, right? And they see we're black and they say, oh, oh, okay. So we, we find that the biggest hurdle is maybe people are a little bit afraid uh, because you know you don't see a lot of people of color in this field at all. Um, mm -hmm. I think I can count on one hand how many I personally know. Um, there's just not a lot of people of color in this field. This is a very white dominated uh, field. So when they see that, they may feel a little bit unsure and may not feel the comfortable to give us a shot uh, to be able to style their wedding and, and go to it from start to finish. So we find that that's the biggest hurdle. But once they get past that hurdle, right, they're so happy that they did. They're so happy that they brought that wall down. Why do you think that there isn't a lot of people of color in the floral industry? Why, why do you think that is? I think that it can be intimidating when you see a field that is primarily one ethnicity. Sometimes it can feel very intimidating and not welcoming. Um, I think when you don't see a lot of people who look like you, you may doubt if there's any space for you in, um, in that forum. Um, and that's why I actually think that is. Also too, it, it's incredibly expensive to be able to start up a business, yeah. uh, let alone a floral design business, right? So a lot of people that you see that are successful may have started from here, but now they're huge. And because they have a lot of rally behind them, right? A lot of support. Um, that's kind of what grows that narrative. So you, maybe you might find a couple of them. I think what comes to mind is Bloom and Bloom, who I adore and love. Sean Strong, amazing, amazing designers. Um, but those are ones that are off the top of my head, right? And that's two that we know of that are really right. huge names, right? Out right. of how many can we name are huge names that are white? Lavender's Flowers, Amy Nicole Design, uh, friends of mine. Preston Bailey. Yeah! Preston Bailey. Preston Bailey's amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I totally forgot about him. How do I forget about him, right? <laughs> right, he's a pioneer. He's a pioneer so, for sure. Um, so how do we change that? How do we, how do we open the floral industry for more black women, for yeah. young, young girls? How do, honestly, how do we do that? Honestly, what do you, doing what we're even doing now and having people of color that are on here sharing their stories, talking about them, met, letting this face and this skin tone be the norm of what you see. It's no longer taboo, right? Or it's no longer, this is in trend, right? Or it's no longer, ooh, well, we gotta make it look like we're hip. Let's 
you know, let's do, let's put somebody ethnic in there, right? That, that's, that's not, that's not language that we really want to encourage. We want to encourage this being the norm because people of color do amazing things and they just need to be shown, you know, to the world. We need to be able to have more of forums and make that something normal to be able to view and not just the typicals that we always see scrolling through our feed. This needs to be normal. Yeah. yeah. So what advice could you give um, young black women, young black girls, um, to be successful, to be a yeah. businesswoman. Yeah. Kill that self doubt. That is the biggest hurdle. I would say that is the number one hurdle that stops people from achieving their best and jumping past the obstacles. Get out of your way and get, get rid of that self doubt. Don't have things come in your head that say, well, I'm not good enough or it's not as good as them. Or I don't have as many followers or I just don't think I can do it. Bye-bye. Eliminate all of that. Be your biggest fan first. Yeah. R rally behind what you're putting out there and just jump in and you do it. Educate yourself too, right? Look yeah. at the, you know, the pioneers before us and look at the work that they've done and see, you know, how they got there. Talk to them, reach out to them. It's nice to be able to have a community of florists to be able to reach out to, um, to be able to answer, you know, answer questions that you might have. So first thing I would definitely say is to get rid of that self-doubt and just jump in have a passion for what you do and continue learning. Always continue learning. Yeah. I never stop learning and I've been doing this for so long. I learned so much, so much. Yeah, it's great advice. <laughs> um, so we, I, I think we kind of touched on it a little bit, but um, we recently asked Kristen uh, Vanderyat on mm -hmm. Mornings with Mayesh. I'm not sure if you saw that episode. I have, I have. Um, and uh, his thoughts on tangible ways to move um, our industry towards becoming more inclusive and diverse. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this is a great platform, yes, um, yes. Instagram. But do you have any thoughts on that? I do. You know, so when you can support tangibly, it also means, yes, reposting, that's great, liking things, it's wonderful, but supporting, purchasing these items, right? Purchasing the products. You know, when you help to fuel businesses, businesses are fueled not just by likes and and happy faces but by money by capital so when you see these businesses and you come up with them support them purchase from them tell your friends about them right that's how we're able to really spread that love and spread uh being able to kind of keep the business going and keep the businesses growing by being able to show your support in capital so if you see some products that you just you can't get your can't wait to get your hands on buy the products try them out give feedback too feedback is huge yeah. huge oh my goodness that is so invaluable um with the marketplace we've been you know doing a lot of uh, shipping and um, a lot of things kind of going back and forth and we love it and it's so much fun but i always reach out to everybody personally and say hey how do you like this tell me what you love about it what would you change about it that's a big deal so offering yeah. good feedback and then supporting and purchasing and giving it a chance Drew, thank you so much. I really appreciate um, appreciate you. Um, you are an amazing and inspirational person, and I'm so glad that you um, that you're doing great. And I love your marketplace. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. I love talking with you. I love it. Um, you're such a great spirit, and thank you so much for opening up these conversations. Continue to do so. That's so important. We love will. it. Love the work you're doing. For sure. Mayesh will definitely continue to do this. I will continue to do this. Um, and I cannot wait to see you. you. Better get back down to Carl's bed. I will be there. I love Yay. it. Have a good one. Thank you so much for Thanks, having me. Thanks, Drew. Bye.